WrestleMania weekend is upon us and it feels like an even bigger deal than usual with an estimated 25,000 fans in attendance making Mania 37 the first WWE show with significant fan attendance in over a year. Even with all the medical safety measures in place it still feels like quite a risk which got us thinking about all the times Mania nearly fell apart because oh boy it's happened more often than you'd think. We're not trying to jinx WrestleMania 37 we promise if anything we're putting this energy out into the world so that it doesn't actually happen and also, the world isn't governed by irony, you big spatula. In past lists, we've already covered some rough mania moments that actually happened. Take his Mania 24 Pyro doing a crowd surf, Triple H's tummy becoming the latest cupcake at the Hummingbird Bakery. But what about the times where Big Vinny's Lil Jimmy's only just skirted calamity? I'm Adam, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and here are 10 WrestleMania moments that almost ended in disaster. Also, if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to Parts Fun Known, please do that. Please, it's WrestleMania weekend. Give us a subscribe, please, it's mania. Honorable mention, what's in a name? Not really a disaster, I suppose, but way back in 1985, Howard Finkel convinced Vince McMahon to call the show WrestleMania instead of the Colossal Tussle. That one act alone would be enough to secure your legacy, Fink, even if you weren't f***ing brilliant at your job, which you f***ing were. Number 10, take a deep Seth. Being at WrestleMania is very exciting. Competing at WrestleMania is even more exciting. Competing first and being booked to beat Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship is the most excitingest of all, as Seth Rollins discovered when he legit almost fainted from excitement during his entrance at Mania 35. In a talking head after the fact, Seth points out moments where his heart was pounding so much and he became so lightheaded, he nearly passed out. You can just about see it. He hunches forward slightly, has a slightly concerned look on his face as he's trying to take in oxygen, and then most tellingly, steps forward, missteps like a man drunk on his feet, and almost goes over. Thankfully, he was able to recover in time for Brock Lesnar to give him a beating, which I guess is a good thing, but we were almost treated to a WrestleMania that began with a surprise appearance from the Hulkster, a hot fire promo from Paul Heyman, and then the Royal Rumble winner immediately face planting on the ramp and having to be stretched off while the entire show grinds to an immediate and frightening halt. Number 9. Spilling the Tea Mr. T only fears three things, not being himself when he's hungry, getting on a plane and being f all the way up by Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hot Rod and Mr. T famously hated each other for realsies and Vince being Vince decided to fuel that hatred for a marquee match. In fact, possibly the most important marquee match in the history of the company. It's well documented that Vince pretty much gambled everything on the success of Mania 1 with its cross-culture mainstream baiting main event and Mr. T teaming up with Hulk Hogan to take on Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff. Mr. T was rightfully wary about being in a match against someone who genuinely disliked him and also was trained in wrestling, boxing and and judo. Afraid that Piper was going to go into business for himself, Mr. T almost walked out on the day of the show. For real, on the day of WrestleMania 1, their star draw almost bottled it. Thankfully, Hogan was able to talk B.A. Baracus down and the match went ahead and it was such a hit that Vince booked Piper and T to have another match a year later, this time a boxing match, which is f***ing terrible. Number 8, a wonderful replacement. There are so many insane Andre the Giant stories that separating the man from the myth becomes like trying to separate spaghetti from the sauce. He once drank six bottles of wine before a match. He once drank 156 beers in a single sitting. He used to be driven to school by Samuel Beckett. He once farted for 16 straight seconds on the set of The Princess Bride. Wholesome tales to tell around the fireplace. By far some of the most fascinating stories though are ones that center around WrestleMania 3 record-breaking smash success sold almost entirely on the back of Hogan versus Andre. There are multiple crazy stories about that night that Hogan wrote out a script for the match but begged Vince not to tell Andre in case he thought Hogan didn't trust him as a worker. Tales of Hogan being terrified that Andre wouldn't in fact put him over. But most insane of all, the fact that Andre's health and in-ring capabilities were so compromised by this point that it was down to the wire whether he'd actually be able to complete at all. With Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff waiting in the wings as a last minute replacement. Thankfully, Andre did compete and the match is, you know, it's fine, isn't it? It's important and it's fine. Number seven, know your role and break your pelvis. Everyone enjoys the occasional staycation, especially the people's champ who once checked himself into the SmackDown hotel in the middle of his match against John Cena at WrestleMania 29. Evidently, the gods of wrestling were unamused at being hoodwinked by the once in a lifetime marketing and took their anger out on the most electrifying groin in all of sports entertainment. In fact, twice in a lifetime is right because Rock actually got injured in both Cena matches. According to The Rock's own Twitter, he tore his right hamstring taking a leg 
drop from big match John at Mania 28, but his injury a year later was far more severe. At 15 minutes into the 25 minute match, he tore his abdomen and adductor muscles completely off the pelvis bone. Sweet zombie Jesus. In the Rock's own words, he briefly lost feeling in his legs and had the injury been any more severe or if the Rock had been anything less than the Sherman tank and tiny pants, the match would have had to have been called off, taking it from being a disappointing end of the night to a scary, eerily quiet one. Number six, I'm The Miz and I'm flawed, son. Oh, WrestleMania 27, do go away. It's the third list in a row where I've made at least a passing reference to it. It's following me around like a shadow that wants to kill me, or more accurately, wants to kill George Mizanin's son. So the ending of Mania 27 is bad enough to be officially classified as a disaster if everything had actually gone according to plan. Miz and Cena would fight to the outside, both land hard and get counted out with The Rock then coming out to actually acknowledge, hey, this main event sure ended like sh didn't it, and call a mulligan for costing Cena the match with his patented bookend. Except during the spot where Cena plowed Miz over the barricade, Miz landed hard for realsies, smacking his head on the concrete and giving himself a whopper of a concussion. It's difficult to tell if Miz was actually fully knocked out, but he's visibly out of it for the rest of the biggest match on the biggest show of the year. And it's just lucky that the injury wasn't worse, because if Miz couldn't continue, no match restart, no rock interference, no challenge for WrestleMania 28 on the next night on Raw. Number five, Big Dave's close shave. Sure, the ending of Mania 27 was scary, but hey, at least Miz had been world champion for a few months in the build to the show. In the main event of WrestleMania 21, a scary moment almost put pay to Batista's entire coronation as one of the next huge faces of the company. According to Big Dave's big DVD, I Walk Alone, he was suffering from major back problems in the lead up to his match with Triple H, including bulging discs, which are the worst kinds of discs. It got so bad, Batista actually said his leg went numb early in the match and he spent pretty much the whole thing wrestling on a leg he couldn't feel which yeah that's concerning. Batista is no stranger to having important runs curtailed by terribly timed injuries, but you literally cannot get more terribly timed than during the main event of the biggest show of the year, specifically designed to get over the two new stars of the next generation. Thankfully, Batista was able to gut it out and finish because wrestlers are not people. They are terrifying beef puppets fueled by ambition and madness. Number four, the Texas Rattled Snake. Wrestling is hard, almost as hard as it is to stop wrestling. Few wrestlers get their perfect last match, but Stone Cold Steve Austin was one of those lucky few, or desperately unlucky, I guess, when you consider you had to retire at 38. But anyway, point is, at WrestleMania 19, Austin had one more round, a wee belter of a match, and a fitting close to his trilogy of matches with The Rock that served as the spine of the Attitude Era. That being said, try to imagine how he, Vince, and The Rock felt when Austin was hospitalized the night before Mania 19 with heart trouble so severe the Rathsnake genuinely thought he was about to die. The night before his last wrestling match, a centerpiece around which Mania 19 had been built and Austin was having his chest scanned for fear of a pulmonary embolism. Turns out, fortunately, Austin had just been severely dehydrated, hopped up on caffeine and a day spent mostly exercising before his match then caused his heart to scream, I cannot work under these conditions. Thankfully, Austin was discharged at the last minute and the match went ahead as planned. Number three, that's so Raven. Fun fact, Luke Owen's favorite wrestling match is the hardcore triple threat at WrestleMania X7 between Big Show, Raven and Kane. Now, to be fair to the Hillary swank lookalike competition runner-up 2012, it's a big, thick stake of endearing bollocks, people crashing through windows, see ya Raven, but you might not know that one unplanned moment almost had awful consequences, or maybe you do because it's one of the most famous urban legends in the history of WrestleMania. A particularly Looney Tunes inspired spot saw Raven try to escape on a golf cart pursued by Kane and a ref in their own go-kart, wonderful, wonderful bollocks. Unfortunately, the planned chase around the arena was cut short when Raven immediately steered the car into a chain link fence and got it stuck, blowing the spot, but it almost blew everything else. See, that fence is covered with thick black cables and along the floor of that fence are a bunch of other thick wires. Somewhere in that jumble of electrics was the power supply to the entire building. Shortly after the match was over, Raven was told by production crews he came within millimeters of running over the wrong cable and plunging the Houston Astrodome into total darkness. That is so Raven. Number two, a fallen star. Beast was not meant to fly. Beast fly too close to moon. 
Moon have revenge on Beast. Blimp Lancaster and Kurt Angle were coming to the end of their very good match in the main event of WrestleMania 19, the match designed to get over the next big thing as a top guy in the company moving forward. As such, Kurt and Brock wanted to end the match with something spectacular, to which Lesnar volunteered. He was able to do a shooting star press. Now, to be fair, he could bust them out like nobody's business in OVW, but when it came time for the big moment, Lesnar slipped on the sweat-drenched ropes, under-rotated, and landed on his head, dealing himself a severe concussion. Like, that's a enough to be considered a disaster, sure, but they still managed to cobble together a decisive enough closing spot to slap the belt on Brock before trying to trank his ass and take him to hospital. It could have got so much worse. At the time, Brock was being billed at just shy of 300 pounds. That amount of weight falling from a height onto his own head and neck with slightly less rotation, he could have very easily broken his neck live in front of millions, and then the ending of WrestleMania 19 would be remembered very very differently. And number one, Undertaker almost kills Streak, comma, self. And speaking of narrowly avoided head and neck disaster, step right up, Charlie Crow won the scariest moment in Mania history. During what many have since dubbed the greatest WrestleMania match of all time, Gary Goff the Haunted Moth took flight over the top rope to the outside, with the planned spot being that he'd land on the cameraman played by Sim Snooker. Unfortunately, Sim was too far out, Taker rotated too far, and almost lawn darted himself skull first into the arena floor. It is a genuine miracle miracle, he didn't break his neck, but disaster still wasn't averted. On talk is Jericho, the referee for that match, Marty Elias, said that before the spot, Taker had given him strict instructions to shoot count him out if he wasn't able to get back in the ring. At the time, Elias' earpiece was also malfunctioning, so he couldn't hear the folk and gorilla tell him otherwise. If Taker had been knocked more loopy than he had been and had been unable to get back to his feet, the streak would have ended that night in the saddest way possible. And that's our list. What are your favorite behind the scenes mania stories? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around. Hit subscribe, all that stuff. And check back soon to Parts of Unknown for more very silly wrestling content. Jam that jam.